Hello, greetings. Uh, this is uh, Zahra Jawad, a former Shia ex-Muslim now. Um, really, I have seen how brutal the world is. And uh, now I just saw something on Iran, uh, the women who are forced to wear hijab. So. Um, Actually, I think in Iran when I was uh, when I met a Iranian here in Dubai who had come from Iran, she wasn't very religious or anything, not at all religious. So I just met one Iranian here and spoke, got to speak to her and all this. She was wearing a dress here, um, and so they don't know things like we know we have learned in Pakistan. You know, and in Pakistan, the way it is, passion play, Azad Dari for Imam Hussain, I don't think it's anywhere else, but in Iraq, perhaps a little bit more uh, or less, I don't know. So my, my father always wants to be in Karachi for the Maharam. Um, so these, uh, Iran this Iranian lady, she was against Khomeini. And anyhow, in London also, yeah, a, long, a younger girl I met in my hostel, an Iranian, she always used to wear shorts and go for the walks. And so I used to see her, and she once came uh, to my room. I invited her. We spoke and everything. She told me that Khomeini killed her uncle just because he was a free writer or something. He wrote against Khomeini. He got killed, an Iranian, right? Just remember this, please. Uh, there's a lot of treachery against me also on YouTube, like ex-Muslims uh, turning out to be fake ex-Muslims because, you know, then they misbehave and then they use some dirty words or bad words also that I've seen. And uh, that this is not my thing, although I will be using bad words because of my condition health and all that, but I'm not, uh, uh, so I have to say this because there definitely is something on me. Uh, today I've been harassed again. I'm hearing voices like jinns, uh, seeing bl uh, black blotches and all that, th this. Where I live, I've been harassed. Uh, the person, uh, the technician has told me, why are you, why do you call me again? Why have you called me again? So I felt it was really funny here, like some jinns have messed up or something, I don't know. But the wall was moist and there was again uh, two drops of water on the wall. So I thought that uh, my water heater was leaking again. So I called him just to check again the third time. So he said that don't, uh, don't call every time and the way he was, I, you know, I told him, like, you are telling me, how many times have I called you for this water heater? They themselves can't find a solution for the one pipe that they did not get it out or it's supposed to go out at the filter. And it's, uh, the man, uh, they reassured me that uh, this will not uh, leak and it started to leak here. Okay, so it started to leak. Um, so it was, he said, two, two, three times you've called me. And I said, how many times have I been right about the leakage? Two times. So today was, uh, no, yesterday, January 30 was the third time I called him. And uh, he's an Indian, I think, man from India. He is our technician here. And he's very, he's rude. I told him, you're very rude. So don't act rude with me and take your ladder and go out. I was really, this was going to be my first uh, breakfast meal of the day. Toasted, two toasted breads with butter. Finally, I woke, I had to stop all that, put it in the fridge. Put my toast, uh, toast 
toasted breads, sliced breads in the fridge and call. And this is what I get from this. Uh, so the uh, Hindus troubling me here, sharp tongue, very rude people. But you don't call us uh, again and again. What if I feel you? You just have to come up and check. That's it. Oh my God. Uh, so, you know, like we had this uh, pipes uh, bursting in Dubai, someone's house, because uh, the uh, I don't know what the problem was, but the walls were all gone in the bathroom. So they had to change all and everything. Yeah. So I got scared. Maybe I said, I, I thought it was the water heater again. So I gave it to him. But uh, like, what's the, uh, what is this? Really? Here. So people are really acting weird with me here. It's like uh, I'm harassed every time. It's like claustrophobic here in the way. I feel like dying. I don't like uh, have to. Uh, there's a taxi, Pakistanis and taxis, and uh, Indians. Like this, you know, we've got junk here. Everyone wants to come for money. So I know I have seen life so closely, and they're using my this uh, condition here to harm me, uh, you know, harass me or exhaust me. Really, the moment I was my first meal and maybe it could be the last meal because it's very difficult to get up and do things. I haven't even myself cleaned when they come. You know, it's a COVID. We have to spray. We have to clean. There's dust. Cement. So there's lots of things that twice there was a water leakage here. Uh, they don't know where to put the pipe that is supposed to be filtered out, go going out. Now, if uh, I uh, first uh, they reassured me after installing a new parade that this pipe is not going to uh, leak. <laughs> it started to leak inside. I mean, this, uh, he, one said, there were two people, so one said that, I don't know what to do with this pipe. <laughs> so that night I was like, is it, like, you know, the whole night when I was awake, until I was awake, Checking, opening the door, but then now it's leaking outside. Uh, if I put the water heater on, maybe it start start uh, the water will start uh, leaking through the wall ceiling or something. So a lot of uh, <coughs> bad breath. Someone just burped slightly. Hallucinations and things. Um, they're making me good for the mental asylum and unable to really do much, get up. So I don't know, I was asking my brother if they provide a nurse or something. I don't know, not for me, because I don't know Arabic and all this. My father has to go and talk to them. Ooh and uh, he went for his own thing and then later on, I had to go for my own thing, but with my brother and because uh, someone helped mm. or they know someone from my family. So it's really terrible here. You uh, alone, like if you are in need or something, uh, people are you know, snapping at you or saying, uh, cutting remarks or bad remarks, like rude remarks, like, why have you called us sick? Why have you called me again? And, uh, this is happening so terrible here. 
uh, the attitude of people. They, uh, in this building, they blame the person who is calling them. I don't know what's wrong. Well, it's outside also, like, uh, I don't know, the attitude is really suffocating. So it's really, really sad in this condition for me here to see this. So, uh, my God. So no one can help me. And I know how treacherous this world is. Anyhow, even then I'm, I'm compelled here. I should be taking care of myself. You know, ordering food and all that. If I don't eat, I get a pain, a headaches, empty stomach, smoking on, and just drinking tea is not healthy. Uh, uh, so, anyways, I rechecked. Puri dunya agar mujhe kade embrace Islam. I don't. I don't think I should do this. I don't think. Uh, you know, uh, this thing, I understand the West can you uh, use uh, their, what do, the Shia Muslim narrative, even the Shias narrative or whatever, and nowadays they say, like what we used to think about the West, that, you know, uh, the thoughts, like uh, they're using women as objects and all this. And not respecting the women without a hijab, like you, Sayyid Yusuf Zaidi said that he would think twice, like would think not so good of a woman who doesn't wear hijab. So I asked him, I said, your mother, your mother wears hijab? And she said, no, but like he, he made his uh, a wife wear this kind of hijab, which is not really a job you cannot. She doesn't cover herself. I saw a picture. So the Pakistanis are a lot into this. And they're influencing the Sunni. They've influenced the Sunnis too to be really to celebrate uh, uh, some first Maharam and forever and all this. And then uh, bring out processions. Because this was not the way of the Sunni Muslims. To bring out processions in Karachi and all this that we've seen later on. And it's not even like that in Iran, I think. Iraq, it may be, but sorry, I don't mean to be rude. But no, um, the th I'm not being rude here. Even though my tone might, uh, oh, I hope you understand that I'm uh, oppressed. I feel it. Uh, so the person's tone is like this. My tone is like this when I'm oppressed. Oh, God. So on my own, I realized one day in Karachi that uh, I don't think that Iran should have uh, hij made hijab obligatory on women. Because I was thinking if my heart was not in it, or probably I would not do it. I was a uh, I had to be forced to do it, and then I saw it was a failure. It backfired, and all this. So I've written in this, uh, seeing these, I've written in one of the RTA comments on Iran, the compulsory Iranian hijab law sparks debate after activists documentary uh, comment. So my comment was that uh, these, meaning these uh, Muslim women, Shias even, are so brainwashed by, um, what is this, Islam. My, I have to put my glasses on. Please bear with me. So these, uh, uh, sorry, I just, these women are so brainwashed by Islam that they can't even see the wrong things and practices Islam has imposed on them. Please see how duped we were. Read Surah Noor, Ayah 33. The part where it gives the choice to slave maid girls. Here, ironically, choice is given uh, to the slave maid girls. If uh, 
they want to remain chaste or if they want to go into prostitution. But it says, if they want to remain chaste. And then you can, intelligent enough, please complete the sen sentence. So the command changes, right? Okay, I'll read. Uh, because in the beginning of the verse, the command is, keep chaste. And then in the later part of the verse, the command changes. The consent, uh, the uh, it's uh, like now the choice is given to the, the slave maid girls. Hmm? Whether to remain chaste or not, but the way it is put it, in other words, this is the thing. So it's a, you know, we have been fooled, we Shias have been fooled, and I will get in trouble. Because, you know, with the Pakistani Shias, Sayyid Shias, some of them are very strict. Some of them are rude with me. Hmm? Some of them, uh, I one was like, my uh, my wife, I said, sorry, your wife passed away. He said, no, no. My wife was an evil woman. Thank God she passed away. Like, you don't have to be sorry for it. My brother, uh, my no, my father, some friend, knew him and sent him. He was from Imam Musa Kazem, saying this about his wife, who has passed away. <laughs> and, uh, you know, telling me, like, very strict tone, like, condescending. You haven't learned Arabic? Uh, huh? <laughs> Quran, your parents didn't? And this and I couldn't. I couldn't tell him, I forgot. Like I should have been, you know, sometimes I very po uh, submissive, polite. A guest has come, he's a Sayyid, he's my father's friend, he knows my... So I did tell him, no, no, it's not my parents' fault. Like, it is the duty of your parents to teach you Quran and Arabic, or call for a Molvi Saad, or a lady, lady, uh, Molana, um, Moliani, that we call her Moliani. Okay, uh, so my I have a reason for that, but I didn't tell him about Allah and uh, the defect I found in Allah. And then this Molana saw who had a lot of honor, like he really had some, re uh, you know, he, he listened to my reason. He said, if uh, I find a reason for this mistake in the written Allah, like you have to both ways like if you put the uh, w thing up then you don't have to write allah with two, uh, double l but uh, i told him malana sahab this double l it's written there so you told me if this comes this shouldn't come so he said if i find a reason i will come and teach you the quran i will come back i will continue coming but if i don't find the reason then I will not uh, come and teach you the Qur'an. He didn't come and teach me the Qur'an. He said, you're right. But if I find a reason that this is why about this mistake in uh, written Allah, in the Qur'an, I will then, uh, what was You know, like, you're right. If I find a reason, but if I find a reason, I will come and teach you the Qur'an in Arabic. <sighs> Anyway, some Iranians want to be free, please. Uh, they are not Pakistani uh, uh, Shias, and they hate Khomeini. I had to literally, like I was, oh God, you know, changing the mind. You know, that's why she was then asking this Iranian lady here. Then she asked, once we used to come here a long time ago for the, in a hotel apartment with my father, opposite was an Iranian who had come from Iran. And, you know, these rumors spread, I don't know how far, I mean, they're true that once Iranians leave their Iran, they take off their job and everything. So she was also like, a, I was like, you don't know, be like Fatima, and she was like, or, you know, like, a, I don't know if, a, but they showed that many Iranians are coming for the ladies, uh, you know, like they're there in Qom, and when they show these women in black. Uh, veils of, first it was called Sarandas, 
when Khomeini had come, imposing this thing. But if it's a mistake, now we must leave this. And we must see. So I'm so sad. And there's also this uh, having problems here. Uh, so anytime I could, like, I want to die. I you know, don't want to live. I'm a coward. I don't want to face uh, this rude, cruel world. So anything now recently, you know, for two days I've been off. They had to, uh, there's a dripping sound here again. Oh my God. So I couldn't uh, even eat the toast that I had put in the toaster. And I said, let the man come. Because, you know, it is also, I had to put it in the fridge or in the um, microwave or something. But I said, I'll put it in the fridge because I have no energy to eat anymore. He just came and checked and then he spoiled my mood by saying, like, you have been calling us again and again. Don't do this. Don't call us again and again. I said, how many times have I called you and how many times have I been right? So he said, three times you've called me. This is the third time and uh, two times you have been right about the leakage of water. Well, this goes on. So, you know, Arabs and there's no one to really reach out and to like be so uh, really reach out, uh, caring and all this. You know, people like are so busy here in their lives, uh, very, very busy. Even my brothers cannot talk to me. If one brother was working, he would not be able to talk to me. Like the way I called him up recently and spoke to him. So it's really terrible. People are not taking time out for that. It's all money, money, money. My business. Okay, they'll send money if they have money. Like my brothers are helpful like this. But talking to them, you know, then their health also spoils. Like they say our lives are, we have, like they have to work, so I have to take this kind of a thing here. Can't help it. I wish my mother was alive, I would have gone back to Karachi. I feel like I'm uh, going to break down, and but I don't have that uh, liberty to break down here. I don't have a support system or someone's uh, humanitarian shoulder to cry. Maybe someone, you know, like I would really break down. Uh, excuse me. Arabs are helping their own people. like. But if you don't have money, then you are like a trash. Um, however, they are helping. Anytime they can, you know, like cut the, uh, this thing, cut the financial aid. And I wish I had it. I wish I, maybe this time, I will make a, it's really terrible. Uh, look at this. Surah Noor, Ayat uh, 33, people suffering and, you know, Sayyid coming in, in Pakistan. Um, you know, you can't trust Pakistani Sayyid. So my uncle joked here with an Imam Bargais. In the name, what do you think? They will be lying to you or betraying you in the name of your father? <laughs> my, oh God, this, uh, you know, <laughs> in Pakistan, like, <laughs> I was, because he had Imam Bargais, yeah? <laughs> he said that, do you think that in Pakistan, <laughs> They will lie to you in the name of your father. <laughs> Another friend was like, Hazrat Abbas ke alam pe jood bolte hai. They lie. You know, using Hazrat Abbas. <laughs> so she knows a lot. She's been out a lot and she's been in courts and family cases, right? <laughs> or no, even outside cases and... She's been to court in Karachi and all this. Oh my God. So look at this, huh? 
uh, the Shias are so stupid now, really, I have to <laughs> call out to them and say, <laughs> okay, <laughs> you know, their uh, prophet has duped them, <laughs> and we are crying for Bibi Zainab and the Matam, we do, no Iranian has ever dreamt of doing it. <laughs> You know, not even my Muscati Khojas, uh, my father's side community do in Muscat what uh, they do. Not even in Dubai. <coughs> uh, so, Shab, Yabbas, Hai, Hai Sakina, Hai Badam. So passionately. And you know, if we do that, then some of the youngsters, like my uh, uncle's uh, uh, as you are born in the UK, and like, why is this Maulana Saab Zakir shouting and all this? Well, uh, you know, he can say it in a. Oh, well, he told me that unfortunately I didn't have proper clothing for my cousin's wedding here. <laughs> so, what I had a long time ago. <laughs> His mother had stopped us from going to London. So anyway, from Fenwick, I had bought this like woolen kind of gray uh, skirt and a short, uh, 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 no, uh, uh, what do you call it, a short uh, jacket. And on it was work done from like, it's British work done, you know. Fenwick is, I don't know which, uh, it's in Brent Cross in London. And on the side was some work, like, so he told me <laughs> that I looked like an, you know, we were going to the hotel recept for the wedding reception, and I wore this, and the whole family came, gathered, because my father, one of his favorite brothers, son, uh, told me that I look like a, a you look like a, uh, air hostess. <laughs> Little does he know. Huh. So anyway, so that's really terrible. I'm being very monkey business. Don't do monkey business. I'm doing here. Oh my God. And uh, so. Tera <laughs> Na pool is a kika tahashir zamana. And really, how stupid can the Shias be? Alas, alas, alas. <laughs> so, you know, in Surah Noor Ayah 33, I had to repeat myself and tell these poor ladies who must be watching also. One of them is a Muslim. At a <laughs> And uh, brainwashed, really. So the uh, <laughs> keep chaste, and then the, the command it changes to consent of slave girls. Because if they desire to remain chaste, then don't compel them into prostitution. Right? This is what I've written. So now see how duped we were and read Surah, read Surah Noor, Ayah 33. Thank Ooh, my English is really great. The part where it gives the choice to save maid girls if they desire to remain chaste, then don't compel them into prostitution. Have we ever asked ourselves questioning this part of the verse? What if they desire to prostitute themselves? See, in the, like I said on live stream Facebook yesterday, that Shias and the, in that thoroughly purify you verse in the Quran, ayat in the Quran, Surah Azaga, they say, okay, this thing changes completely and it's not for the Ummul Mumini, the wives of the Prophet, although before Allah is speaking about the wives of the Prophet. <laughs> and they give all the singular and feminine is there and the male dominant, <laughs> no, just kidding, <laughs> misogynist verse. <laughs> it becomes a, mis a misogynist verse, <laughs> no, I just, <laughs> yeah, so it changes, right, uh, <laughs> from, oh, God, 
you know, this and plus <laughs> the world is brutal and so is Islam <laughs> and the Shias now, really. Say so, yes, I've had enough. <laughs> Oh, Kashmiri Sayyid. <laughs> I've had enough. No, no, we did have a Kashmiri Sayyid. Uh, he was uh, Sabtar's um, uncle, relative. My, fa my mother was uh, somehow very angry at him. <laughs> oh my God, so once. So, okay, um, maybe that's why the, no, no. Anyhow, why the Kashmiris, I, why are the Kashmiris after Iranians, I don't know. That I'm sorry for. So we have all these brutal people, the Kashmiri Muslims, then we have Iranian Muslims who uh, have been so uh, like, and you know, this lady here, in, uh, whether I should talk about this or not. Uh, so she says that, you know, we, uh, the Iranians chose this for that. They didn't, uh, hardly had a choice. Like, uh, there was a referendum. And after Shah of Iran, I don't know, I wasn't in, uh, <laughs> someone who was praising the Shah of Iran <laughs> was my grandmother, actually, <laughs> here in Dubai. It is so ironic, really. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, and my grandmother in uh, Karachi, she was Iranian origin, uh, married to my grandfather. So she was all the time listening to Khomeini Iran, the radio, you know. Also, we were so ex overexcited. Oh, Khomeini Rehber, he's the representative of, of our Imam Mahdi. Now you see, uh, I've written here, okay, seriously. What's noteworthy is that the command of Allah has failed here. It, uh, not to put properly, I mean, an uh, English teacher, come up, please help me. Uh, the command of Allah is not given here. It changes from the command to uh, choice given to the safe girls to remain chaste. Choice is given. What's noteworthy is that the command of Allah has failed here and the verse turns to the wish or desire of slave-made girls. No Shia expert of the Quran has pointed this devastating choice left on slave maids' consent slash wish or desire. So tragic. I'm a former Shia ex-Muslim. Due to this verse and some other verses in the Quran, I think I changed. I'm I'm an yeah, so very succinctly put by me <laughs> that I'm a former due to this verse and some other verses in the Quran. Sometimes my mind is not working either. Um, bear with me. If you're with the crippled, you know. So. Behen me sahar Sina pe hu nadim sarvar sama to kya hua laras as pen teher teher yaha laras rahi sorry I don't remember the uh, word by word there's no uh, so my ground has like it already but I cannot embrace this religion right anymore there are some great things about this religion. <laughs> but uh, the... So when you realize, see, that this is a false prof uh, prophet and a false religion. Now tell me, Shias, from Iran, there must be some great religious uh, scholars, Quran experts from Qum. <coughs> I think Qum is the place, city for studying. My father said he would go to Qum if he didn't have these responsibilities and duties of uh, taking care of uh, wife and children to then later on. <laughs> no, no, when he had to, he said this, that he would want to go to Qum and study and all this. I would, would want to go to uh, perhaps uh, Shiraz, where my grandmother was from, and 
go to Hafiz's tomb. So what's noteworthy? Can you see this? Uh, I'm reading. Sorry. Can you hear this? What's noteworthy is that the command of Allah has failed here. Or that he has, it's changed here. What I mean in better English. And the verse turns to the wish or the desire of slave-made girls. No Shia expert of the Quran has pointed this devastating choice left on slave maid's consent, wish or desire. So tragic. I'm a former Shia. Can you see this? I'm a former Shia, ex-Muslim, due to this verse and some other verses in the Quran. I think the Iranian Shias made a great, grave mistake, grave mistake in choosing, oh, choosing, uh, where's my, oh, another, oh, okay, I made a mistake here, in choosing the Islamic revolution in the country. I hope one day comes soon that they realize and rectify the grave mistake by leaving Islam altogether. L, L together. Sorry. Thank you. So sorry for the, see, look at the mistakes. Oh, God, I wish I was uh, expressive because what I see here, see, it is unjust. The Iranians don't know. Shias. Leaders have not even seen this. No Quranic expert has told them even that the prostitutes, safe girl prostitutes, have been given a choice here. Although it says in the previous verse also to keep chaste, and it says in the same verse to keep chaste, but who are these women, girls, maids, slave girls, sometimes translated, that who have a choice? to be chased. It's God's command. How can a girl be chased? Right? You can't trust in any woman to be chased. It's a, the God has brought, this is in, in the Quran like mentioned that the way God commands them to be chased. Right? It's mentioned like that, like keep chased. It's mentioned in the same ayat that I'm talking about. Then, but, you see, we are told women are half of men in witness and all this, and they are this and that. Now my stomach's uh, growling and gastric, uh, all this, uh, because I haven't uh, really had, I did have my two toes dip them in uh, the tea now that I made. But still my, uh, um, Sorry, uh, okay. Now, and then I realized that, you know, Imam Ali, so this lady here in the, uh, it's just a very important point. I, I'm sorry if I will be making mistakes here. Um, this is RTA's, uh, R, no, RT, RT, E, or RT, compulsory Iranian hijab. This is a YouTube. I hope I'm not uh, infringing upon the copyrights of RT, RT, news, huh? So, it's so, it's so, so anytime I, you know, there, it's a over, uh, I will die of over exhaustion here in Dubai. What if you found out my, I'm reading my, what, post, yes. What if you, later, after this, what if you found, what if you find out, found out? This is really great. Some jinn is doing a great job. I want a teaching jinn, angel, guardian. <laughs> Please, English, British. What if you found out that your culture came from a false religion? See what Imam Ali says about following ridiculous cultures or traditions. There was some place a, a saying, oh, no, no, no. Uh, Imam Ali gave this whole thing about going, maybe it was in Najil Balakh I read, I'm not sure. So I correct myself if I'm wrong. But I did read this somewhere. 
maybe it was some uh, George Ordex, the voice of human justice. Is it like that, the title? On Imam Ali. That, uh, you know, he, he went someplace and there were all these people coming and, you know, they were perhaps like jumping up and down and hooting or whatever, like, you know, like that. They were greeting Imam Ali. Right? So Imam Ali told them that, no, no, stop this. I don't need, what are you doing? They said, we are greeting you this way. He said, this is our tradition. It is our way, culture, tradition to greet people in this way. So Imam Ali said that uh, this is uh, ridiculous. This is not right and you shouldn't be greeting me like this. So what I gathered from that is that when you have a ridiculous thing in your culture uh, or tradition, practices like these, what Imam Ali was telling me, I'm, if someone, I go in the forest and some, for uh, you know, a tribe comes and starts to, you know, like uh, Tarzan, ooh, and, you know, goes like this on the chest. And I, I will understand that they've lived in the jungle for so long and they're like a nature, a natural people, right? So I'm not going to, I wouldn't uh, criticize them. But very good point, our own the Shia Imam Ali has pointed out that if you have a, so what if you find out if your religion is a false religion and you've been duped and deceived and now this is from the mouth of the horse like the Quran itself I'm this is like a, a million I don't know sorry I'm not God to count infinite like how many times have I been repeating that in the Quran ayat Surah Nur ayat, the choice is given, the command uh, of the of Allah's way of writing, uh, the command thingy has failed. It's not like he doesn't put it there <laughs> in a command way, like keep chaste. So you see, I even on live stream Facebook, like what's the, like see if the command would be that... Uh, do not compel your slave girls into prostitution to seek the worldly gains of this life. But no, this, okay, this is the command. But no, it's not put like this in the Quran. It's put, see, put, it's put, do not compel your slave girls into prostitution if they desire to remain chaste, if they desire to remain chaste. So it's been a mammoth of like challenge for me to tell even the Quran experts can come. Shias, especially Shias, okay, not Sunnis, my Shia. Quran experts. So one of uh, I heard that Sayyid Amar to ask uh, this uh, person, maybe like they were saying what's up and all this. So I don't know. Uh, I'm shy to if Sayyid Amar Amar can uh, Sayyid Amar what's Naksh, Nakshwani is a Quran expert, I was told by someone. Or something I found out somewhere on the, in the video. Or, you know, and he's an expert. He also recites majlises and all this on YouTube I've seen and I've listened to some. You know whether this is... Uh, who will see it? And who will really be the honorable man like that Maulana Sahib was? to accept the uh, the mistake or the false in the Quran made. Let's see, let's see, in this, uh, you see this, uh, this, uh, I was saying on my live stream that I was thinking today, like even Shia Islam, it's been so indoctrinated, it's been so, 
put in us in ways uh, that, you know, we fail. And then we are, we are told, uh, like, you know, when we are suffering and there's no one to help, we say, be patient, Bibi Zainab is there, or think of Bibi Zainab, or if we are those kind of women who have been, like, and, uh, you know, or maybe some, some Shia thinking, we haven't held on to uh, this religion properly, so that's why we've been, we were being punished or something like that. But when a doctor, when you're in trouble, Okay, this is a spiritual trouble. We say Rouhani problem is go. It's go. We don't say Dimaghi problem. Hai. Someone told me like this Dimaghi, pro- this Rouhani problem. This is the spiritual crisis that I was having. That's why I used to say spiritual crisis. I was having even religious crisis. But we in Urdu, in Karachi, when I was seeking help, like Rouhani help. Rouhani means spiritual help, not mind help. Not the psychiatrist and uh, therapist. So I really like that. I really did. That we call it uh, the spiritual problem. Now, anyone could be having a spiritual problem. She has, you know, someone's husband drinks and all this. And <clears throat> so they had a big house. And so they got into a wreckage. And this poor lady would be thinking, yeah, forget it. I'm not going to any uh, religious, like, uh, you know. Any Shia say, you tell me you haven't, your husband, but you are saving the this person from that Shia who herself is a witch and corrupted. You see? And then what did Imam Sajjad say? With this, this tradition going on about Imam Sajjad, used to, I was being told by my aunts and all this, <clears throat> that when he saw his father's butcher, butcherer, on the uh, sands, burning sands, thirsty, wherever near uh, in the forest, uh, in the out, outer areas of the, the desert. Okay, no forest or anything in the desert, right? In the desert area somewhere. What do you call it? The Sahara. <laughs> no, no. So um, he. Told uh, like the uh, he's uh, the butch- butcherer of his father, the one who cut his father's head, was thirsty and he saying thirst and thirst and he was dying of thirst and uh, he was uh, dehydrating and all this. So Imam gave him water. Then he recognized Imam Sajjad, and he said. Did you know who I am? If you knew who I am, you would not give me uh, this water. So he said, I'm here to do good. And I know who you are. You are my father's butcherer. You, you, you murdered my father. In Karbala, I'm meaning Imam Hassan, right? So this. But we hardly, there's so much of azadari fervor that's very, very good, okay. Let's not, I, I even change my, like, no, that's not bad. But, uh, you know, all year round, like going out, seeing that the oppressed, that thing. Anyhow, uh, but uh, then if I give you a verse from the Quran, then you say, well, oh, great. But no, no, I don't approve of this. I know I've read it, and uh, the command of Allah, prostituting slave girls, is there in the Quran, according to me. I've established it, meaning I've established the way it is written there. If you tell me some Arabic problem is there in me, then, sorry, God should have communicated in uh, the language that I understood to me. Because uh, uh, as it is, reading the lives, uh, then going to this tradition and that tradition, I didn't have time to even breathe properly or, say, you know, I, I was fighting between my sanity and insanity. <clears throat> and so, no, Islam is not that humanitarian. 
we cannot stand people going in uh, even like taking help from hindus do you don't have to become a hindu to take help from a hindu you can just use the then finally slowly slowly if you say oh my god what a great it this is working the yoga is putting my stomach in uh trimming my stomach and all this i mean of course you're going to go into that any people will go into it but i was like if if, if my if uh, karbala my religion imam hussain sacrifice i will never leave it even if the yoga of the uh, hindus is trimming my stomach and firming my body and all this okay i would not have uh, left it maybe many iranians would have left it because they're not like the pakistani shias in that fervor and all that maybe they're uh, showing some kum area or some maj mashhad area with women outside going i when you see a iranian outside of iran you will be shocked hardly i've seen i've seen a, a iranian couple holding hands here walking or you know in the lift and uh, so free and talking like that love birds and so in the in the building or lift or not outside like yeah outside i saw one couple holding hands here although you're not allowed to do, do this they were walking right in front of me and i was so surprised that um you know so they're holding hands here so have i uh, i have not said this properly i fail in front of shias and feel very sorry that i cannot even help iran iranian ladies what a, a, you know when a, a shirazi died the police of iran what they did to his cough uh, his mayat his body oh god so there was a fight and there was this thing shirazi allama well, a grand ayatollah muhammad shirazi now i think his uh, cousin or some uh, grand uh, some a relative has taken over his office but i heard the iranian police you know his cough is my at his body we don't say coffin but anyways let's say coffin or pra, uh, whatever that thing. so you uh, they had a fight on this he is such a grand ayatollah muhammad al shirazi so this is really really sad here and you know about imam uh, toidi the iranians they've brought out like pakistani with them have brought out you know they can speak in a british english they brought out this video biscuit or you know on uh, youtube against him that he's a jewish spy and all this and he's a fake he's not from a shia he's not a reliable shia alim he's uh, out of it he's out and gone and uh, um all these uh, Sh- shias themselves making these uh, videos so I don't know who is uh, doing what. <laughs> Can't even trust my own shadow here. This is the sad part, right? And nothing to laugh about. So I, I don't know what's going on really. Can't trust my religion there. So sad that uh, Iran has got to the women wearing obligatory and you know then they lash. I heard about lashing. jail fine and the pakistanis will tell you about the iran and Ira- iranian women but i wish they would come to dubai and go go travel in the iranian air airline right and see the moment the plane i heard this i'm not sure how far like the moment the plane hijab is gone all 
wrapped up this way so no one they don't uh, in London as I'd seen Iranians you know they they don't care for this uh, Imam Hussain and sacrifice and all so much deep going into this religion and all this ah oh, goodness okay thank you very much as much as these Pakistanis Pakistani Shias do Sayyids also okay thank you very much and I don't know what's wrong with uh, Pakistan really okay thank you very much sorry I will go now.